Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to a brand new game which just came out uh, today, if you're watching on livestream, or, or yesterday if you're watching on YouTube, uh, and that is Radio General. It's a game that allows you to play through World War II in command of a Canadian force uh, through some of the different campaigns there. And the sort of shtick of this game is that it allows you to play battles where you don't actually see the battlefield. It's a map, and you have to move your units around the map based on what they're telling you uh, in radio reports, and issue orders to them through the radio. And it's similar in concept to Radio Commander, which is a game that looks at Vietnam, uh, except in this case, obviously, we're looking at World War II. Uh, and so, naturally, the tactics and, and the, the war itself is very different. I also get the impression that Radio General has a little bit more depth to some of its combat mechanics. Uh, I was digging through some of the manual, uh, or not manual, but sort of in the tutorial it gives you some uh, pop-ups and some screens about like terrain differences and tactics and flanking and defenses and things like that, where to me it feels like this might be a more traditional war game, where I feel like that is more of a, a narrative story that... that you move things around in a tactical way, but I'm not sure that game really cares about terrain or other things like that. Could be wrong, but I never really, really got the sense that there was a ton of tactics other than send unit to this spot on the map, and then they're going to engage the bad guys, and then you have to call an artillery fire and those kind of things. So, I don't know, that was my perception. This uh, stream is going to be a little bit longer than last night, so I think we're probably going to do two battles, maybe three. There is a second part to the tutorial. We played the first part in our last uh, video. This next one is a training operation, which takes place in England in 1942. And then after that, we will go into the Sicily campaign uh, in 1943. So let's go ahead and click on the training operation here. Uh, you can see Dieppe has proved uh, pro or proved far more training is needed before we're ready to face the Germans again. Field exercises are performed under more realistic conditions uh, where you can't see your units. Uh, topics include units getting lost, reorient reorienting, uh, being out of communication, spotting and targeting enemy enemies, uh, radio ch channels, and artillery. So um, sounds like we get a little bit more detail in this. September 3rd, 1942, Alderstadt, England. Welcome to Alderstadt. Named for the many alder trees in the area, Alderstadt became the first permanent military training base for the British Army in 1854. This has facilitated, or this, yeah, this has facilitated rapid expansion and growth to the population in the area from about 875 in 1851 to 16,000 by 1861. During the First World War, it became Britain's largest army camp, with 20% of the British Army being trained in and around the town. During the Second World War, about 330,000 Canadian troops passed through Alderstadt for training, with additional units following afterwards. Interesting. General Gamelin. Gamelin was, uh, was French, right? Okay... Interesting. I like all these little historical vignettes. Infantry training manuals. Let's just watch the little video then. Make them tough. And then we'll watch the video and then we'll, uh, then we'll play the battle. You've got to be tough to take the new kind of war. And one of the jobs of the battle wing at CTS is to make the Canadian Army that way. The obstacle course plays its part in getting officers and men into prime condition. And it's no small part either. You can take it or leave it. But you can't leave it. You've just got to take it. Thank you. 
Careful now, Joe, or you'll be caught with them down. <laughs> I really like the little archival footage bits. I'm probably going to play them before every battle. Alright, dispatch. Will you use voice commands? Yes. Overview. D yeah, okay, so we already, we already read, read that. When ready, hold spacebar. Start mission. Unlike the previous tutorial, you cannot see your units. You must ask them for their locations over the radio. Okay. Abel's lost. Have Abel report status. Abel report status. Abel here. We're lost, but we can see a road one kilometer south of us and a hill one kilometer northeast of us. Use the WSAD keys to scroll wheel and inspect the map. Each grid square is a kilometer. Uh, okay. Each. Okay. So we have to actually read the map, which this is kind of cool. Um. So what? It, Abel report status. So if each hex is a kilometer, and they have a hill northeast, would that put them here? Left click and drag Abel's figure. Abel, move south to the... R oh, never mind. I... Ah! Abel, head south. Hey, I was kind of close. Okay. Baker, report status. Baker's radio must be broken. You'll regain contact with Baker when they move to a... So units' radios can break? Huh. Baker's last known location is mentioned on the Intel report section of the briefing. Uh, which is where? Enemy tanks reinforcement expected to arrive from the crossroads in the afternoon. We're unsure which town will, they'll attack. Baker was last seen on the road going through the western forest. Well, where the... I don't know where that is! Um... What? How do I open this? I wanna... Okay. Baker's last... Was last seen on a road going through the western forest. A road going through the western forest. So this road here? I don't know. Abel, move to Golf 5. Abel here, moving to Grid Golf 5. Having, having radio issues on the field is a bitch? Yeah, I imagine it probably would be. Well, I guess they were close enough anyway. Abel, report status. Abel here. We are at Golf 5. Okay, so they got to Golf 5 and they were able to see them, so they're adjacent. Let's update the map. Okay, so we did that. Okay, we need intel on location one. Abel is a scout. Scouts can see further and move more quickly through any terrain. They're camouflaged, they're skirmishers, and will retreat when confronted with a stronger force. Abel, move to location one. Abel, you're moving out to location one. They'll be expecting us. I really hope when we get past the pilot, or pilot. Okay, why did everything go black and white?
What? Tag. I'm confused. Okay. Um, I'm really hoping that as we get into the actual battles and past the tutorial that this thing opens up a little bit and you can actually leverage tactics and things like that and that it's not just move to here and move to here. But again, it's a tutorial, so it's walking me through this. Able, report status. Able here. We are at Hotel 4. Got eyes on. Alligator at location 1. Hotel 4 is here. We can't defeat an enemy company with just scouts, but we do have artillery. Order Baker to barrage location one. Baker, fire barrage at location one. Baker, here. Out on Juliet. Go. Oh, that is Juliet too. Boom! Hey, wait a minute. This wouldn't really happen to a real map. Abel, move to location one. Okay. What's going on, boys? Able here, location one. It's ours now. What do I do with this? How do I get rid of this guy? Able here, that's the last we'll see of those enemy infantry. How do I just... Can you... I guess I can just move them off the map, maybe? I'm not sure. All right, enemy tanks will be coming from the bottom right. We're unsure which town they'll attack. Move Abel to the hill to watch both roads. Abel, move to location three. Abel here, Roger. Moving to location three. We'll need special equipment to fight the tanks. Deploy reserve anti-tank guns. Or inspect the briefing clipboard and click the unit info sheet. Click on deployable units under reserves. Okay. Abel, report status. Abel here. We are at Kilo 5. We're headed to location 3. So I'm assuming I'd want to move Charlie somewhere. I don't know where. Okay, they're moving west. So if the flash is up here, I need to click on the icon. Okay. Yep, already did that. Using the enemy's position and movement direction to determine which time they're going to attack, send your anti-tank guns, Charlie, to the endangered town. Charlie, move to location two. Charlie here. Roger. Garrisoning location two. Able report status. Able here. We are at location three. Got a visual on there. At November 7th. Heading west. Okay. So we're gonna, we've got scouts on top of this hill that are going to see visuals of this tank moving west. Our anti-tank guns are trying to move into position. And then, whoa. Charlie, report status. Okay, so they're at location two. So this is a little bit cartoony. You can use NATO symbols, though.
Charlie, report status. Baker, fire barrage at. I don't know where that is. Baker, fire barrage at Hotel 7. They're running! Hey! Yeah, Abel was just basically watching. Thanks. <laughs> Did you actually lose any casualties, Charlie? Victory! Deployed 95, total casualties 5, 1 KIA, 0 MIA, 4 wounded, rounds expended 1937, not to be confused with the year. Abel, the Princess Patricia, uh, light infantry scouts, no casualties. They traveled 20 kilometers? That seems unlikely. Uh, Baker Royal Canadian Artillery, zero casualties, uh, damage dealt 18.6, experience gained 60. Charlie, the Royal Canadian Anti-Tank Guns, took five casualties out of 40 men. That's a pretty high high figure, although only one KIA. Um, they expended 924 rounds. That must include small arms. Traveled 8.3 kilometers. We'll assume they're on a truck. Damage dealt 47.1. Experience gained 125. Meanwhile, the Op 4, uh, not actually Germans because we're in England, uh, deployed 120 men. They suffered 25 casualties, 6 KA, 2 MIA, 17 wounded. Uh, alligator, 15 casualties out of 100 men. They routed. Uh, Bear was the Panzers. They lost 10 out of 20. I'm assuming tanks uh, with 4 KA, 1, 1 MIA, 5 wounded. 20 remaining troops. That doesn't make sense because they started with 20. Um, okay. So that's the post-battle report, a major victory. Great. Now I want to know how different the actual war is going to be. All right, so we got tough training. War is utter chaos, and the idea of training, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, more historical photos of different troops. Canadian Woman Army Corps. Anti-aircraft gunners. Let's check out the uh, historical footage. Little girls and big guns. What? Canadian Army Newsreel number six. Let's check this one out. Schoolgirls from a nearby convent were the unofficial guests of a Canadian heavy ACAC battery when they paid a visit to the gun sites and had a good look at the big guns that are keeping enemy raiders at a distance. The battery is situated in a residential district on the outskirts of London and has had the pretty good luck against the Huns. The girls and their teachers know full well that these Canadian gunners have played a big part in protecting them. It was a big day for the little girls and a big day for the gunners, for they got a real kick out of showing their young guests just what makes the Nazis nervous. Okay. Big guns are life. Big guns are life. Okay, North. All right. I think that does it for the tutorial. I'm not sure how well prepared I am uh, for the actual campaign that will be coming. But uh, that does it for the 42 campaign. Now we will be moving into 1943 in Sicily. So we have some understanding of how to move units around, fire artillery, things like that. Um, <laughs> North and his love for 122 millimeters. I thought he liked 155. Or, or 155s or 150s. I'm not sure which. 152s? Is that a thing? Alright. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at Sicily. Looks like the Battle of Pacino Airfield is our next mission. Um, yeah. So let's... I'm back. Let's go ahead and get started with the Battle of Pacino Airfield. Uh, we'll take a look and see what happens here. It's the Sicily campaign. 
uh, which is our first actual um, campaign against the enemy that isn't a tutorial. Obviously, we fought the enemy at Dieppe, but that was a tutorial. So, the Battle of Pacino Airfield during the invasion of Sicily. The Allies land in Sicily. The nearby airfield and towns must be taken, but friendly reinforcements are slow to arrive. Naval artillery support is used to beat off a large counterattack. I really hope these are well-crafted scenarios and, and are unique and challenging in their own ways, but we'll find out. July 10th, 1943, Pacino, Sicily, Italy. <clears throat> Welcome to Pacino. Location, Mediterranean coast of Sicily. Features sunny and windy, many beaches, lots of fish, developed agriculture. The Canadians were greeted by a sunny expanse of beach at Pacino with over eight kilometers of beach. Pacino remains a popular tourist spot to the present day. It is known for its abundant fishing and agriculture, focusing on the production of tomatoes and wine. J.L. Ralston speaking to troops in Sicily. British portable steel air raid shelter. What? What the fuck is that? Ha! Let's go hide in a little steel thimble. That seems absurd. Is that Monty? Looks like Monty. All right, let's get our good old war footage ready for the day. Sorry, guys. I just love these things. You can skip ahead later if you want. Canadian-built realms of the Three Rivers and Calgary Tank Regiment board their LCTs in preparation for another big landing exercise. Final waterproofing is completed to protect crews and engines, so that as the craft approach the enemy coast and the ramps go down, the tanks can practically tackle a submarine. The chief danger seems to be jellyfish getting caught in the works. That'd be freaking terrifying. Hopefully we don't go straight to the bottom! I know this is Canadian, but that's a, that would be such an American thing to do. Well, how do we get rid of the waterproofing? Blow it up! As the spearhead of the attack we've waited for for so long, there'll be few problems which haven't been studied ahead. And no obstacles that won't be beaten with the help of Providence, Canadian ingenuity, and good shooting. I love those little those little bits, those little video footages. They add so much to it, in my opinion. Plus, as someone who like grew up watching like Victory, you know, the Victory at Sea uh, documentary or other things like that. Each mission requires you to fill unit slots. Left click and drag units to unfilled slots. Read briefing and pick the right units for the job. Okay, this is interesting. So there's sort of an army management element to the game. Um, the invasion of Sicily has begun. The Canadians form the left flank of five British landings spread o over 40 miles of shoreline. The landings are to take place near Pacino, close to the southern tip of the island. We must quickly push out from the beach and capture the village of, oh boy, Mussini, and then uh, drive onto the nearby airfield and Pacino itself. 
Due to our surprise landing, initial enemy garrison units are likely to be under strength and should be no match for our infantry. Hopefully, we can overrun the garrisons before the 122nd Italian Coastal Infantry Regiment can muster a counterattack. You will be receiving naval gun support later in the day to beat off any counterattacks. Due to delays, we have only landed one infantry company at the moment. Yikes! A single company! Additional infantry reinforcements should arrive within the next few hours. Okay, so this is the map that we're dealing with. So we need to take uh, Pacino Airfield. I'm assuming both locations of Pacino, but the airfield location is over here. I'm assuming we're going to start down near Mussini, location number two. Um, you can see here the objectives are to hold Pacino and the Pacino Airfield. So each of these two locations sort of in the center and north part of the map. Enemy strength, uh, battalion strength, 700 or 300 to 700 men. Uh, light infantry, Italian coastal divisions generally act as reserves and thus are poorly equipped and have lower morale. One company is garrisoned at airfield, unknown if Pacino itself is garrisoned. Enemy reinforcements expected to come from the north road. Take Mussini, be cautious when approaching the airfield, and Pacino. You may want to wait until reinforcements arrive. Remember to flank and surround enemies and defensive positions to minimize their defenses. Don't be shy of using your naval artillery support when you receive it. They have plenty of ammo. Okay, so that's our briefing. Um, in terms of our units, it looks like we get one infantry unit that we can pick to start. Reinforcements come at 200 hours, a second infantry slot, and we get a third reserve infantry unit slot. So we've got the Seaforth Highlanders Infantry. They're defensive. We've got the 48th Infantry Regiment. They're rugged. I don't really know the difference between what all that means. You can see here the Seaforth Highlanders have morale of 100%. Uh, while the Highlanders apparently only have 70%, interestingly enough. Um, the unit's speed is the same at 6 kilometers. Defense is higher on the Highlanders. Damage is higher on the... Well, wait, they're, they're both Highlanders. The 48th is, is better damage. Attack range 1, defense 2, experience 0, 0. Do any of these guys have any experience? No. I wonder if I'd have more units to pick from if it wasn't, uh, if I didn't get all my men killed at Dieppe. But it looks like we've only got these sort of four units to, to, uh, deal with. Loyal Edmonton Infantry, Royal Canadian Infantry Regiment, Hastings Prince Edward Infantry. I'd prefer to go with the aggressive troops on the initial landing, so we'll put them there. I think we'll go with the rugged troops for the reserves. And the Wiley troops for the reinforcements. I'm not really sure, though, because it looks like there's different unit types, like scouts, engineers, snipers, tanks, anti-tank guns, and artillery. We don't get to pick from any of those for this. So I don't know how much it matters with three different infantry units of the same type. So let's go. Maybe useful to plan troop movements before the mission starts. Right click on the colored pencils to the left to draw on the map. <sighs> Sorry, Abel. Hit Alt or right click on the wooden pointer on the left to stop drawing. I don't know what I'm doing! What did it tell me to do? Do I really have to pick up the different colored pencils? It's weird. I'd like the top-down view of the map. All right. So Abel's going to come in here. Well, these are 2 and 900. Not quite sure where Abel is. Abel, report status. Okay, Foxtrot 9. So presumably they're going to come ashore here. They're recommending we take the the town itself. So if they come... I mean, like, okay. So I don't know how useful that's going to be. But we'll move in to take the town, I guess. And then once these guys come in at 2 o'clock, we'll move them north here to take the airfield itself. 
then we should move north here this way. So we'd probably attack the airfield combined with the reinforcements that come in at 2 o'clock, move these troops forward here, then wait for naval gunfire support to take location 1 and sort of a unified push. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what I'm... Wow! Look at the pencil! It's flying! <laughs> That's so dumb. Okay. Um, Machini, be cautious on approaching the airfield in Pacino. Okay. So the town might be clear by itself. So we'll have to see. No! Stop! I don't know what I'm doing. Right away, sir. Starting operation. These are your men that I have in your hands? You'd hate to have me as your G3 North. Well, you know. Look at these pencil scribblings. It's all good. I know what I'm doing, guys. <laughs> Able, report status. Okay, get on the beach, guys. Let's go. Look at me bounce the pencils. <laughs> Sir, men are dying. Ah, but the pencils, they bounce. Oh, are they actually landing over here? I thought this was the reserves that were landing at 2 at two o'clock. So, I may have been wrong on that. So I still think what we do is we we'll probably move toward Muccini first. That probably secures our flank. There, there is a roadway directly toward the airfield, but I don't want to attack with just one company. So these guys will land here. We'll move to take the town to secure our flank, I think. Yeah, no, I see the timer counting down. Deploy reserves. Deploy reserve infantry. Ha! I got my troops on the field right away. Charlie, move to location two. Abel is still at Foxtrot 9. Able report status. Alright, so Charlie has taken Muccini. So actually, this works better. Oh shit. Is Charlie under attack? I'm fucking this all up. Okay. Able. Uh, Able, move to position. Or shit. Able, move to location two. Able, report status. Okay, so. Let's see here. We should probably move to Foxtrot 5 to get on this hill. I think that's a bit of a hill. Overlooking the airfield. Well, the airfield's at higher ground, so that's hard. Yeah, the outflanking shtick didn't work because I didn't realize I already had troops under... I mean, I've got troops under attack, so I'm moving two companies to Machini here to hopefully hold off the attack. I should probably ask Charlie to pin the enemy. I don't know if they can do that while it's paused. All right. Baker, move to location three. Baker here. See that control tower at Chino Airfield. I want it captured intact. We spotted infantry at Chino Airfield. Charlie, or Baker, hold position. Able, report status.
Abel. Move to location three. Charlie's going to hold location two to hold the flank. Actually, Charlie, move to Juliet three. Abel, report status. Baker, report status. Abel, report status. Move faster, you idiots. Charlie, hold that crossroads on the right flank. These guys are gone. Charlie, report status. Okay, Charlie will hold the flank. Baker, report status. Abel, report status. Abel, hold position. Baker, move to Juliet 6. Okay, so my plan here at this point is Abel's going to hold... Well, bear me. I'm going to have Abel hold location 3. Abel, hold position 3. Abel, hold location 3. Southeast would bring him into Charlie's flank. But I think the intent is Abel will hold their position here. We can take a look at their stats here. It looks like they've got 100 troops. They haven't lost any casualties yet. Charlie, move to location one. Baker, move to Juliet 3. Baker here, Roger. Moving Charlie here, planting the flag at Pacino. Charlie, report status. Charlie here, we are at Pacino. We've got a few wounded, but nothing serious. Where the hell is Alligator? Okay, so we've taken both of these towns. We've also taken Machino. Naval gunfire support will be on on site in two hours. We have Able Company holding here at location three. We have Charlie holding at location one. So the two objectives on the right and left flank. We have Baker located in the crossroads here to cover both sides. Charlie's at slightly lower elevation. Baker is a... Wait, what? Baker, report status. What was that? Wait, I thought... Jesus. Charlie, move to Mike 6. I thought they were up on the crossroads. Wait, so they just drove him back? Baker, move to location 2. You go take Garrison Machini. Charlie, move to location one. God, my soldiers are going to hate me. Run left, run right, run in circles. Charlie, move to Juliet 2. Charlie, move to 
Juliet 2. Charlie, move to Juliet 3. Alright, so... Oh, shit. Enemy counter... Charlie, move to location 1. Baker, move to Juliet 3. Baker here. Yeah, no. Baker, move to Juliet 3. Baker here. We we a on the of town. Baker, move to India 3. Baker here. Roger. To India 3. So it looks like enemy attacks are going to be coming on in about two hours from the north. Wait a minute. Alligators over here. Shit. You've been given naval fire support. Okay. Baker, report status. Dog. Fire barrage at Hotel Ah, oh, shit. Cancel artillery. Able report status. Able here. We're at Latino airfield. Dog, fire barrage at India 1. Dog here. Hornets confirmed. Fire barrage at India 1. Hopefully these bad guys are still out there. Maybe they'll come onto the map Dog right under artillery. Good for you. Baker here. We've lost visuals on here. Baker, last team at Hotel One, heading west. Baker here. They're attacking the air. Don't let him get into the outbuilding. Able report status. Dog, fire barrage at Hotel 2. Dog, cancel barrage. Dog, here. That fire mission. Dog, fire barrage at Lima 2. Dog here. Thunder down on Lima 2. Boom! Baker, report status. Baker here. We are at Hotel 2. We are at Route 2. Hotel 1. We have suffered moderate casualties. What, why are they moving to Hotel 1? I didn't tell them to go there. Baker, move to Location 2. Baker here. Roger. Garrisoning. Mancini. If you're going to run all over Kingdom Come... Able report status. Dog fire barrage at Foxtrot 2. Charlie report status. Able report status. Well, the naval gunfire support sure helped in this battle, but I don't... It felt like some of my troops were kind of moving on their own without my orders. Looks like we've got about an hour and a half left. Dog, fire barrage at Foxtrot 7. Okay. 
Able report status. Able move to location three. Charlie, report status. Dog, fire barrage at Lima 5. Alright, so that barrage is coming in handy. Okay, good. So I think we won this one. It was a little bit chaotic. I wasn't keeping track of my units all that well. Hell yeah for naval gunfire support. Having engaged the enemy, you should now be capable of accurately estimating the enemy's strength rate against you. This intel may save lives later. I mean, all I saw was maybe four. Hey, we got that right. Granted, it kind of told us with the little things that showed up on there. But hey, for a first battle, not bad. 340 men deployed. We lost 80 casualties, 36 KA, 4 MIA, 40 wounded. Expended 68,193 rounds. 23% casualties, that's pretty That's pretty heavy. Uh, drag the metal onto the left unit, deserving, um, deserving unit. I mean, all the troops were deserving, but I guess... Whoa, Baker lost 50% casualties? Medals for you, boys. Even though you were kind of, like, not listening to me. The enemy deployed 400 men, he lost 229 men. So they lost three times our casualties, 79 KIA, 25 MIA, 125 wounded. We way outshot them in terms of volume of fire, 68,193 rounds versus 35,932. I don't really know what the rounds expended. I don't believe Dog fired 2,316 artillery shells. A major victory. So we can watch a replay? Okay, so this is just going to show us, I think... Why doesn't it let me do the top-down view? So we can see where the units move, and we can also see where I place the figurines on the map. So the blue uh, squares are where the units actually are. The figurines are where I put them. So we can see we drove Tango 1 off toward the town here. We didn't move the, the hex, the, the icon right away. They fell back to Pacino. We then moved Baker in on Bear. We attacked from the other flank here, drove those guys further north. Moved in to take the airfield. We then moved this infantry east. To support Charlie. We were going to move them south to this hill. My intention was to flank from this hill south and advance north while Charlie came in from the west. But then we had to divert south because we saw these enemy troops fall back here. We realized the town was unoccupied, so we moved the troops in there. The enemy troops continued pushing west toward Machini. Baker engaged them. We then moved Charlie south to assist, although Baker was able to drive the enemy off before Charlie arrived to this hill overlooking. We pulled Baker back, or we ordered them back to the town. Moved Charlie back north. Abel, meanwhile, continuing to hold out at the airfield. Tango tried to rally itself and move north. These guys really showed some, some gumption there. So we moved Baker up to support. Baker was kind of our mobile reserve. Tango was almost knocked out here. Less than 50% strength. I wish I could get a better angle on this, this map. Okay, then we called the artillery in, which drove them off instantly. New enemy troops came on the map here. You can see where this is where the new two enemy uh, companies came in. 
artillery. Looks like we missed him there, but we did hit Tango 4 there pretty, pretty spot on with that artillery. I do think it's a little bit silly. These guys seem to sure move around the map pretty, pretty fluidly. That artillery barrage probably saved Baker there, dropping it right on Tango. The enemy tried to move in around our flank, it looked like. Move along the coast and on Machini. We hit them at very close range with that artillery, inflicted massive casualties. They're down to 25 men there. We also hit Tango 1 right there with a direct artillery barrage as they approach the town from the south. Okay. Destroyer with four, four by one quick fire, 120 millimeter guns. They can fire a shell every seven seconds. Okay, Nor. Okay. Units might move too quickly. Yeah. Okay. Operation Husky, July 10th, 1943. The 1st Canadian Infantry Division and the 1st Canadian Armor Brigade began the amphibious invasion of Sicily, Operation Husky. The mission was exceeding, went exceedingly well as many Sicilians were tired of fighting. Those did not resist were quickly overwhelmed by the Canadians and they took control of Pacino's airfield. Sicil Sicilian surrender followed willingly and en masse as German troops hastily fortified key strategic positions in order to fight a defensive retreat, a strategy which was repeatedly seen throughout the Italian campaign. Well, we did lose quite a few casualties there. So I don't know how well it went. I'm sure my men wouldn't feel like it was super easy. <laughs> a Canadian soldier at the grave of an Italian soldier. Okay. Landing fairly easily for Canadian invaders. Losses reported low. I lost... I lost quite a few men. Just saying. All right, let's watch our little uh, newsreel here. Uh, no Cannibal, this is a different game developed by a different developer. Excitement is in the air around a certain CWAC barracks somewhere in England. A detachment is preparing to leave for the Mediterranean theater of war. The medical staff is having a field day. The girls are inoculated against every disease in the almanac, including the bite of the Italian wolf. You won't need your winter woolies, Private Smith. You're off to the sunny south. The tropicals will be the order of the day from now on. Join the army and see the world. A summer cruise to the land of romance costs plenty of folding money in peacetime. Now you can make the trip on the government and draw army What was that capsized food. ship? Something like a lurking Jerry submarine just lends spice to the army. From the happy faces of our CWACs as they come ashore, no hardships were suffered. They refused to confirm the rumor that the sergeant major served tea in their bunks every morning. GHQ, the hand-picked contingent, will relieve soldiers for frontline duty. A hearty welcome is extended to the Canadian Army girls who have traveled so far to carry on for victory. I like how underneath that capsized ship they just had like a plank so you could like just walk on the underside of the ship. I'm guessing there's like decaying bodies on the uh, on the inside of the ship. Um, okay, so we completed the Battle of Pacino Airfield. Looks like the Battle of Val Gunuria is next. Vitrio, an Italian one, maybe? Yeah, maybe. The Battle of Val Gunuria. After a night march through ridges and mountains, one unit has become lost, and we've lost communication with another. Enemy panzers are on the way, and the town of Valgurnia must be taken before morning. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until... How did we only lose 57 men out of 1,000 deployed at Dieppe? It actually lists the names of everybody who was killed in your units. That's pretty 
crazy. Look at that. You see all your MIA and KIAs. I don't see any woundeds, so these must just be like permanently removed from your, your force. That's freaking nuts. And then there's this unit management tab, which also apparently exhausted units perform poorly in combat. Understrength units start with fewer troops. Units not deployed on a mission get a chance to rest, removing both exhausted and understrength effects. Deployed units become veterans and gain specialized points that can be spent when examining that unit. So this is much more wargamey than something like uh, Radio Commander the Vietnam game. Because there's actually an element of like managing your troops. So we deployed these three, these three units and now they're uh, tired. They're all exhausted. One of them is under strength. Um, and, you know, they've, they've all gained some measure of experience. Um, looks like I can give them traits or points and kind of upgrade the units and make them better, which is kind of cool. Um, so we need to make sure we don't forget to do that because I only just stumbled upon that by accident. I don't know if I can write any more letters, Newhauser. No French Canadian units. I mean, nothing yet. We got the uh, so it looks like we'll have three three new units to start the next battle, plus the two units we didn't deploy last battle. So we'll have five units to choose from. I need some anti tank guns or something, right? Like, are there gonna be any? Oh, there there are. There's three rivers tanks. Sneaky. <laughs> so those are our those are our units right now. But uh, that's kind of cool. I didn't I didn't expect to see that. Um, we'll probably rest these three units that fought last time then. And then we'll go with some of our other troops who, have, who are still going to be green. But um, And I'll also figure out how I want to manage my uh, experience bonuses. I need to look into that a little bit more between videos. But um, that'll be for next time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.